CO2 has a number of interesting properties. It can exist as a solid, which is dry ice, as a liquid, when it's pressurized, or as a gas, and that all depends on its temperature and its pressure. It's kind of like water. Water can be an ice in a solid form, it can be a liquid when we drink it, or it can be a gas when we boil it. Now at atmospheric pressure, just like we are in the world here, CO2 exists as a solid when it's below 109 degrees Fahrenheit, so very, very cold. That's when it's dry ice. Now, when it's above that temperature, it's usually a gas, and it only exists as a liquid when it's under high pressure. When we fill our smaller, like soda stream, almost one pound cylinders from a larger tank, like this 20 pound tank that's under high pressure, we're moving the liquid form of CO2 from a higher pressure container to the empty container, which has no pressure in it until we start to fill it and the pressure starts to equalize. Now, under normal atmospheric pressure, CO2 is a gas. That's why when we release pressurized CO2 in its liquid form from a container, such as this full one here, it comes out of the cylinder and it's no longer under high pressure because it's outside of its pressurized container and it almost instantly boils because CO2 has a very low boiling point at around negative 109 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 78 degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna vent just a little bit of this. I've got the door open behind me and you can see the button here. If we depress, instantly turns into a gas, even though it's liquid inside of its pressurized container. So if you remember, the form of CO2 depends on its temperature and its pressure. When we have an empty, smaller container that's very cold, we're, we're controlling one of the two variables that we can, right? We can control the pressure by what container we have it in, but we can also control the temperature. Now this colder temperature, allows the CO2 to remain in its liquid state at a lower pressure. So if the smaller container was warmer, less CO2 can actually be stored in its liquid form and more is gonna escape during the refilling process. To wrap things up, keeping the smaller CO2 containers cold, frozen, before refilling is essential for storing as much as possible of the liquid CO2 into the cylinder. I've also found it just makes the starting process of refilling much smoother. You don't uh, fill too fast and fast, and there's just there's less hiccups than when the canister of the cylinder is frozen. Everything just goes a lot smoother when you keep uh, this frozen when you're going from the larger container to the smaller cylinders. It's also just nice to keep track of which one is full and which one is empty. Obviously, you can tell the weight difference between the two, full one and empty one, but it's nice just to keep my empties in the freezer and then keep my full ones at room temperature in a safe spot. Lastly, there's no danger in keeping an empty CO2 container in your freezer. I wouldn't keep a full one in there just in case you have like a frozen chicken fly around and maybe knock the neck off of a full container. That wouldn't be ideal. But when these are empty, there's literally nothing left in here. There's no pressure. There's nothing in here. It's literally just a piece of metal. So you can, you can always vent these outside just by depressing the small button at the top. You can use end of a butter knife here works well. So that's why uh, you wanna keep your uh, canisters, your cylinders uh, frozen before refilling so you can get as much uh, liquid CO2 in as possible because you can control that variable of how cold uh, the container is. So until the pressure equalizes between the two cylinders. So I uh, hope this was helpful uh, and uh, please uh, subscribe to the channel uh, so I can create more interesting soda stream bottle refilling bubbly content. Thanks a lot.